what I consider self-care and what you consider self-care may or may not be the same thing. When we start getting the template from social media, from entrepreneurs, who many of whom I admire as entrepreneurs, I don't admire them as wellness people because I don't think that creates wellness when you're only selling things and you're selling aspire to be me, okay, which is what our culture does. We have to really be careful with that. It's out there, you know, fine, but I don't want to be part of it. I don't want to promote it. And I really would like to create different opportunities for women. You're listening to The Milk Podcast. This is the show where we talk about motherhood and sexuality with amazing women with fascinating stories to share on the joys of being a MILF. Now here's your host, the milfiest MILF I know, Jennifer Tracy. Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is MILF Podcast, the show where we talk about motherhood, entrepreneurship, balancing all the things that go along with being a woman and a mom. And I'm your host, Jennifer Tracy. Today on the show, we have Dr. Suzanne Gilberg Lenz. Suzanne is my gynecologist um, and has been for many, many years. I, I, I'm not totally sure how long, but I want to say at least 16 or 17 years. And um, I was so excited when she said yes to being on the show because uh, I just love the way that she looks at things and. Um, She's just really become this tremendous wellness advocate for women's health. And she has a tremendous amount of life experience to go along with that, um, obviously, and her medical background. Um, But more than that, she really is wholeheartedly engaged in the pursuit of bringing women together within the context of this, supporting each other, supporting each other's health and what it means for each person. You know, she and I talked a little bit about that. Like what self-care is for you is going to be different than what self-care looks like for me. Eating a pound bag of M&Ms. I'm kidding. Although sometimes I got to say that is self-care for me and it's okay. And I'm not even joking. Like I'm being dead serious. But we did talk a bit, a little bit about that in this sort of social media culture where you know, it's easy to get caught up in like, there's so many fancy, beautiful biohackery sites. And, oh, if I don't have the right amethyst crystal, then, and it's like, well, no, actually it can come in a more pedestrian package that is more suited to who I am as an individual. And so she really supports women in embracing that. And I just love this conversation. I love her. And I'm so grateful that I get to share her with you all. Enjoy. Thanks for listening. Hi, Suzanne. Hi, Trish. <laughs> I'm calling your last name. <laughs> it happens all the time. Do people do that to you all, all the, time? the time? That's so weird. Yeah. Well, my maiden name is Hip. Oh. Oh, God. So, oh. I should have kept. I should have kept it. But that's a good name. It's such a good name, Jen Hip. Did you have to suffer through a lot of like? Oh, definitely hippopotamus. Yeah. You know. Well, when you're a kid, especially. Yeah, when I was a kid. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. annoying. Yeah. We all have a cross to bear with our names. Yes. Yeah. But I like Jennifer Tracy. It has a nice ring. It is. It. It's good. It's kind of like a strong, yeah. clear. I don't know. I like it. Thank you. <laughs> so let's talk about the fact that you just walked into my house <laughs> and right. said, I have to. And, and handed you a bit, actually. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> no prob. That's how I roll. It's not normal. So not Suzanne normal. walked into my house and we got settled to get ready to record. And she said, well, I have to just take my bra off first. <laughs> And then you said, let me explain my situation. So here's the thing. First of all, this, you could see this top. Okay. I don't want to wear a bra with this top. It It looks great without a bra. You can't wear a bra with this top. It's like not meant to, but you know, I'm 52. And so you wear a bra. And so I have a strapless bra, which is literally the most uncomfortable thing thing ever. And I really thought about it because I was having lunch with this man who I haven't met in person yet, and we're going to be doing business together. And he's like, oh, by the way, he's a cannabis person. So I'm like, as if he cares. <laughs> that you're not wearing a bra. Right. Right. It's it's crazy. Um, but I just was like, I cannot do it. Like my mom's voice was in there like, what? Okay. So, but here's the thing, because I am not a person who would walk around braless, except in my own home. Um, this is where I'm like trying to be more modern and like, body positive, like just, you know, be with the millennials. I have millennials that I 
you know, own. <laughs> I don't yes. own them. They're my children. Yes. Yes. And my daughter in particular is like, ugh, you know, just offended by like me wearing a bra is a thousand percent about your discomfort with my sexuality. So you can fuck that off. Okay, I love basically. that. And she's right. Yes. She's right. Yes. But then there's like reality. Like, do you want your doctor? Like, I'm not going to be with my tits bouncing <laughs> in the office. It's not appropriate. It's just not. <laughs> But I will tell you that I wore, I got like three of these because they're the most comfortable thing in the world and they're so cute. And so um, it's like a drapey what do you, tank top thing. Yes. And I wore one to, like cash to the my family's Father's Day brunch. And my mother was really like kept trying to cover me up. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah, it was wild. I was like, wow, wow, shaming 52 me. years old. <laughs> You're shaming not allowed me. to have And I was breasts. like, mom, really, I'm, I'm okay. I think this encapsulates everything and like why you need to have this yes, podcast. Yes. Well, it says it all. It's like all the different generations and like women, how we feel about ourselves, how we present, how we feel about other people's feelings about us. I mean, oh my God, we could probably do like an entire yes. podcast on braless or not. In fact, I'm I'm going to go home and buy that <laughs> domain name. Yes, yes it <laughs> is know? so true. It's so true. Yeah. And can we, th- I feel like this could be a good segue into the fact that you are a breast cancer survivor. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> No big deal. Just cancer survivor. I am a breast cancer survivor, it's, which is something that I don't think about very often. I really don't. I mean, I have a scar that's actually a little bit visible when I wear clothes, which I don't think about at all. Like in the beginning, I definitely did, but I just don't think about it. It's almost five years and I had very early stage treatable, you know, it, I mean, it changed my entire life. Yeah. A hundred percent. It did. When that happened, you know, being, doing what you do, what was that like getting that information? (sighs) It's complicated. I mean, you know, on the one hand, and I've told people this story before, I could feel something and in your breast. Yeah, I could feel it. I mean, I could feel it like when I'd wash, because it was actually like up under my, in my armpit. And I could feel it. And I was like, hmm, that doesn't seem right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I mean, I do breast exams all day, every day. Yeah. Like if a patient had walked into my office and I had felt that, I would have been like, shit, that's where it's mm-hmm. I mean, I totally would have. Mm-hmm. It had every feature. But there were th- it was like, you know, getting worse with my period and then like getting smaller. And and I and to be really honest, what was going on was my daughter was having her bat mitzvah. It was a couple months before that. And I was like, you know what? I don't have the bandwidth for this. I don't feel like ruining this experience for me because yeah. what will happen is I'll go do what I need to do. I'm not going to tell my kids cause that's going to, I mean, that's going to ruin, like they'll be completely flipped out. And I was like, I'm just going to wait. And it wasn't like eight months or something. It was like two months or three months. Right. And then literally 10 days after her bat mitzvah, I was taking a shower and I could feel it again. And I was like, I got to do something about this. And, and then, so that, I, I actually think that that's not a doctory thing at all. I think that what that indicates is like, I was just like a regular woman with yeah. a life and like my own anxieties and fears and responsibilities and, you know, crazy ways of like telling a story to get through something. Oh, I, I so get it. I'm doing the same thing. I mean, I came to see you for my my yearly a couple months ago and I'm 43, have not gotten a mammogram. I am going this Saturday at 10 a.m. They scheduled me, Good. but I'm finishing up my divorce. And I had thought, and my health insurance is about to run out because it ends when the divorce judgment is final. Oh, court. yeah. And I thought, and I have very, very lumpy breasts. I always have. And I've had a couple biopsies. They've been benign. But I thought, now I'm going to get cancer. Like, now I'm going to get cancer right. through the divorce. Right, now that I don't, it, right. <laughs> you know, but I- The mind but, is a very powerful. It's the most powerful. But I put organ. off the mammogram. You know, they had to reschedule me, but I, I could have been more aggressive about getting it. I was like, I don't want to deal with this right now. So I can relate to that. It's, I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, and it also says so much about like, I don't know, putting ourselves last and all that. Although I still stand by my decision (laughs) because it's in a weird way. I was also putting myself ahead. Like I wanted to enjoy the experience and I was, I mean, maybe I was wrong. I mean, I wasn't wrong, but you know, I think there could be other circumstances where I could have been wrong, but I felt like I really did not think it was going to be cancer. That was the funny thing. It wasn't like I was like freaking out like, oh, yeah. Like yeah. I really didn't think that. Yeah. Once he went in and he was like, took a whole bunch of biopsies, I was like, Hmm, that's not good. But you know, I still, until I heard it, it's not like I was like losing sleep. And I, I, 
I have a weird way of compartmentalizing. Yes. That's also, that is, I think, very specific. To, I mean, that's why one of the reasons I'm good at what I do is I can compartmentalize. Yes. Sometimes that's not healthy. But um, yeah, so yeah, it was so, different. I, the other thing I think that was really, for a long time, was was hard for me was when I would, at the end of the day, I go through all my results and, you know, ta- we have, we have a electronic system. So there's all these tasks for me, emails and calls and results and things like that. And for a long time, when I would have to go through people's mammograms, I really was resentful. Yeah. It was really weird. And I was very aware of it. I was like, whoa, you know, this is like your job. And like, you shouldn't be pissed that this woman is 15 years older than you and has a normal mammogram. But I was, I was like, yeah. you, yeah. I am 47 and I have breast cancer. I don't want to read your normal fucking mammogram. Yeah. And I also don't want to hear how nervous you are about it. Fuck you. I mean, yeah. really, I thought yeah. that. Sorry, patients yeah. are listening. <laughs> well, but I definitely human, had yeah. some, like, I was not, I was angry about it. Well, so I, that, I want to circle back to what you said about how it changed your life. It set a new course for your life. So you got the news, you got the diagnosis, you go start getting treatment, whatever the surgery, then what happens? Well, I mean, what happened was that it accelerated other things that were going on in my life because I was, you know, not happy in my marriage. And um, we'd been struggling and trying to work on things for a long time. It wasn't like we weren't talking about it. And, um, I do have to say shout out to Scott Lenz because he was, ext- I mean, you would expect your husband to be a supporter, but he was, it was like, cause the people have said to me, oh, did your marriage end with breast cancer because he couldn't show up? No, 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 no. That's not mm-hmm. what happened. So spoiler alert, the marriage ended. <laughs> yeah. That's what happened. Yeah. But he, um, he was really, really, really supportive and, um, he was great and he's a good dad and all this other stuff. But, you know, I realized without getting into so many details, like, I, the stress of not being happy in that was really unhealthy and, and toxic. And I said to myself, I don't want to have a stress related, you know, immune dysfunction that causes a recurrence of my breast cancer. Cause this breast cancer is not going to kill me. I really don't think this breast cancer will kill me, but the stress will. And I, I do feel, I mean, I've talked before about this, you know, I mean, I'm careful about how I say it and when I say it because it's just my own conception about my own body and my own person. But I do feel like my stress level had something to do with this. I mean, you know, obviously no major medical diagnosis is that simple. I don't believe I gave myself cancer. I'm not, I don't believe in that. And I don't believe in the kind of judgmental language around that. I don't think anybody would say that out loud. I'm, say they believe that, but right. I really don't believe that. Right. But I do believe that my stress level was through the roof, not just from the marriage, the kind of work I do, the way I was living my life, um, really feeling just pushed in all directions, not, not connecting with the stuff that I loved and feeling like victimized. I think that I allowed myself um, to not be accountable and to be a victim instead. And that created a huge amount of stress. And that is an immune suppressor. Mm. That's a fact. That's a scientific fact. And I do think that that played a role in developing a major, you know, medical, I mean, cancer. Yeah. Your immune system isn't working right. That's part of it. Wow. That's, you just said a mouthful. And I'm just thinking how many women can relate to what you just said, not necessarily about the cancer, but about the stress, the, your accountability in it and how you were perceiving things. And I, I, I'm not even going to try to. Well, I mean, I just, I felt like I was at everybody else's yeah. whim, beck and call. And, and it's you had like two teenagers at the time. Right. You know, and, and a career that's extremely demanding. And, and I think the way I looked at my career, I think this is true in, in, for a lot of us is like how I thought other people viewed me was playing a way too big of a role. Like I didn't realize it, but in retrospect, I see it. Like, first of all, that's so narcissistic. Nobody's actually thinking about me. (laughs) I'm thinking about me a lot, but nobody else is really thinking that much about me. They're thinking about them. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Like, hello. But there's a lot of this, like keeping up an image and, you know, I'm in a high profile practice. I'm in a high profile job. I do a lot of high high profile stuff. And I think I was like, well, if I'm not the person who does X, Y, Z, or if I'm the person who doesn't do X, Y, Z, like somehow it's going to reflect poorly on me. And it's like, 
What? Yeah. Like whatever. Yeah. Okay. That's Great. so much too bad. pressure and stress. It's a huge like amount of said, pressure. Yeah. It's a huge amount of pressure, which I was putting myself under. Yes. And and in addition to being a wife, a mother, mm-hmm. you know, of two teenage kids, mm-hmm. that's 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 too much. It was too much. Yeah. So how did you shift out of that? What happened? Well, I mean, the first thing I did was sort of just kind of get real about what was important to me and what made sense. And um, be, I, a lot of it was, I just, I, I wasn't being, I wasn't as afraid anymore. It's like, even though I, you know, I don't want to over dramatize it because I, and there's a whole thing with people who've had cancer specifically where we feel like, oh, well, her cancer was way worse. I don't want to say much, you know, like that's <laughs> kind of a thing like between us, like, well, her cancer was really scary. Mine, I, which is crazy. Cause yeah. I still had something that made me aware of my mortality basically yes. is what happened. Like who thinks about that at 47? You don't, Yeah, you don't. Why should you? You shouldn't have to. Right. But I was like forced to think about it. And when, once that happens, like my choice was to not be afraid of things anymore because really what is more scary than that? Nothing. Yeah. Well, losing my children, poo, poo, poo. I don't want to say that loud. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? Like that's like kind of the scariest thing. Yes. And then it was like, okay, well now this happened and I'm here. So, I mean, I'm going to just start doing things in a much more fearless way. Yeah. And that made it easier and more obvious about like ending certain relationships, ending certain behaviors. You know, I, I work less, I work less than the rest of my partners. I work plenty hard, but I started really limiting a lot of stuff that just wasn't serving me. And that was just too physically and emotionally hard. And, and I also, I did a lot of public stuff, like a lot of media for a long time. And I think I, um, I, I just took care of myself for a long time. Like I actually have been doing a ton in the last almost a year now, but for, I didn't do it for a couple of years. I, you know, I didn't, I really just everything extraneous that I wasn't clear about that I didn't need to do. I just didn't do. I just focused on taking care of myself. I focused on really my health on what I was eating, how, what I was consuming, like in all ways, you know, with all of my senses. Um, and I think when the marriage ended, of course, I mean, it was very hard. It was extremely hard. And that first, you know, year and a half or so was really painful in a lot, a lot, a lot of ways, a lot of endings and a lot of like reckonings in terms of how I conducted myself on a personal level and what I was doing out in the world. And, um, really honestly getting involved in 12 step as a result of that, which like really, really, really saved my life in so many ways. Um, so just like kind of recovery yeah, in all senses of the word. Yeah. Wow. I mean, so it God, really sounds like so happy. The, <laughs> it's so good and juicy though, because what's coming from it, what I'm hearing you say is that getting diagnosed with cancer, like freed you from all of these things that you were binding yourself no, to. No, it saved my life. It saved your life. That's yeah. so, Isn't that weird? that's crazy. I'm, I, I, you hear this from people. Yeah. You do. You hear it a lot because of exactly what I said. It's like, well, what do I have to lose? Yeah. Like what I'm, the way I'm living is not living. Yeah. It's not the way I want to live. Yeah. It's not authentic to you. Yeah. It's authentic to some idea you thought you needed exactly. to have Exactly. I was enslaved to like an image. Like of the bra. What, mm-hmm. Exactly. Like the bra. So Which, now. by the way, you should never wear a bra with that. I'm looking at I, it right now. I love the my way My man, looks. listen, he he's, has sure a lot he's of opinion. about it. Yeah, totally. He'll be it's like, so and hot. you're not wearing a bra. Like, why would you wear a bra with that? The way your necklace is, I mean, sorry, but it's <laughs> super hot. Right, but I didn't want to be like inappropriately hot with this I get other it. guy. I like get that's it. weird. But I it's so fucking hot outside that I was like, no way am I wearing a regular shirt. Yeah. Sorry. We had okay. to come, my, oh, we'll always come back my, to the bra. My boobs distract yes. you. <laughs> my breast cancer survivor boobs. <laughs> which are fabulous, actually. Yeah. <laughs> they are. You have a good pair. Thank you so much. I appreciate um, that. Yeah. So mine are very lopsided. I remember going Oh, mine to are see- too. Really? Oh, I guess God. that's normal. Yeah. But well, that's I went normal. to see We're Christy all... Funk. Oh, you did? Who yeah. I also really want to have on the show because she's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I took my shirt off and she was doing, like, she'd done several. Uh, Christy is a, a renowned breast uh, specialist. And I took my shirt off and she said, wow. <laughs> I'm dead serious. <laughs> she said, wow. She said, yeah, yours is a full cup size bigger. She's like, you know, she's like, well, you could get a uh, breast augmentation on one. I'm like, nope, 
We're just going to go yeah. lopsided for the rest of my life. My, That's most cool. Most people are. I mean, <laughs> I I was too. The the thing that I was like annoyed about was that my bigger breast had the breast cancer and it still is bigger. And I was like, wait a second. Are you going to tell me right now <laughs> that like I basically could have had a free breast reduction and that's not what I got. <laughs> I'm not okay with that Another reason to be resentful. I so love annoying. It. So wrong. Oh my God. But it's super, it's perkier on that side because of the radiation. <laughs> Interesting. Radiation perks up. Well, because it tightens the tissue. It's, oh, it's so crazy. Let me just say that like, I mean, I also... I'm like so, uh, very unselfconscious conscious in a lot of ways, like not in every way, but I didn't, I can't say that I was like terrified about going out and being single and dating and like having this body. Okay. But I was like, mm, that's going to be a thing. And then it just wasn't just FYI ladies who are becoming single. Yeah. They don't care. Oh, they do They're not like, care. Great. Naked. Awesome. Oh, like bring it. I remember they, and they, I, they, yeah. they don't, you know, this is all of the crazy well, shit we tell just ourselves. This projection again, to go back to what you were saying of like porn and, yeah. you know, the, and what we're sold, all the we're Photoshop sold, we're sold. And the Disney and this, I remember mm-hmm. asking my uh, Marissa who uh, has been waxing my bikini for, I don't know, 18 years. And I remember at some point we were talking about bleaching, you know, like bleaching buttholes. And I was like, is that something I should do? She's like, cause I, I was, <laughs> anyway, I was dating. I was starting to date a little bit post, you know, separation. And she's like, oh, they don't, that's, they just want to get inside of it. They don't right. care what color it is. That's a hundred percent true. And I mean, it's so funny, but it's also so sad. Like, what are we doing to ourselves? Well, is, we'll have another conversation about yes, that, but yes. Oh my God. Well, and something that you had texted me about earlier in the week was uh, a post that Lena Denham had, had put yeah, up. Yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. About she had this two yeah. uh, dual sided post. One was her currently kind of, you know, looking not polished and makeup and this. And then the other one was her several years ago thinner and, and ma- had makeup and this and that. And she was saying in this, in that former photo, that she was very sick. Mm-hmm. and very unhappy and currently she's just like doing the things she loves she's mm-hmm. very healthy has mm-hmm. good friendships and relationships and that is something i'm having a lot of conversations yeah. about like this whole instagram life facebook life yeah yeah it's really intense i mean i think i think people are talking about it a lot too so i don't know cuz i don't know if i'm just surrounded i think i am surrounded by a lot of really like authentic, just this is who I am people. So I'm very grateful and fortunate, but that's because that's what I'm doing, you know? Yeah. Um, cause I want to think like, oh, well, everybody knows that, you know, what you're seeing online is bullshit, but that's not true. People are so affected by yeah. it. So affected by it. And I have to say that I, even though I know this, like, I think the perfect family thing. And so you can probably relate to this too. It's really, really hard when you like you know, you've gone through this thing. It's like, we got married, not because like we we knew there was a 50% divorce rate. (laughs) We got married thinking like, really, we're making a lifetime commitment. And, you know, you want to create your family and all this stuff and whatever in your mind is this perfect family. And, you know, that sometimes will get to me. That's more of a Facebook thing, like everybody's vacation and and I'm actually not on Facebook hardly at all for a number, not just because of that. Like I, but because it's also just a time suck and I just have yes. things to do in the real world. But um, one of the things I started to realize at a certain point is that like the more perfection that you're seeing, the more likely that couple was to be on the skids. <laughs> like I can't tell you <laughs> how many people I was like, you, like the next thing you hear is they're separated yeah, or one of, you know, one of them's cheating or something, you yeah. know? And it was like, Oh my God, I really, cause I really bought that. Yes. <laughs> like, I we bought want to. that he is the yeah. most amazing man ever. And thank you for like, why do you need to put that online? Yeah. My guy and I aren't even like, like we follow each other. Yeah. I don't, nobody needs to know his Instagram address. Yeah. He likes everything I put on, but yeah. you know, and I do the same with him, but it's not like in a relationship. Yeah. I know. Do it. A- that sounded so mean for the people who do that. <laughs> But I just, I'm 52 years old. Yeah. Well, and you've also just been there, done that. Like, I feel like 
Yeah, kind of. It's just a different. I mean, but there's a part of me that's like, well, I don't want to. I mean, and then I'm like, okay, wow, girl, because actually, <laughs> like, what he actually does in real life is a lot more important than whether or not he. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, I'm pretty sure he's not trolling online. Yeah. And if he is, I guess I'll find out. And he's an asshole. Yeah. But like, <laughs> you know, I'm. I don't think he is. <laughs> Yeah. I yeah. mean, what are but you going to do? What are you going to do? It's just a thing. And I'm le- I'm learning to especially doing this podcast and and my my team, my producers uh are helping me use it cuz I kind of had just gotten away from social media altogether. Yeah. Partly because I was going through a painful time, you know, divorce right. and this private thing and and partly just because I was not interested, but I'm get it's getting reinvigorated for me the social media because I'm utilizing it and I'm seeing how it can in a positive way connect people through if you have this this thing you want to share like and I'm I'm so excited to share this podcast right. and so it's like a genuine right, right. thing it's, it brings something totally different like I've been totally posting different. a lot too and I have like I have this women's retreat in November and so I'm excited and I'm kind of like there's a lot of stuff going on with me I just spent and I'll post about this today which was so cute like I went to this there's this amazing cannabis based company called Foria, which okay. is unbelievable, wonderful products, most of which are for sexual pleasure and women's health. Okay. So I've been following them for a long time and we, we're going to work together. And so I went out there to have lunch and then he showed me this, their place. And I was like, you know, Instagramming, like, you know, I was like doing it, like, I'm excited to put, post that yes. video yes. and talk about like, what Matt and I talked about. And I really respect like what he's doing in the world. And like, that's exciting to me to share with people Yes, and, you know, get that information out there that, that I like. Yes. Cause it's going to help so many thousands of people have a better experience. Right. That's powerful. Instead of like, Hey guys, I'm at the promenade and I'm going to get some new Gucci shoes or whatever. I mean, not to be, that sounded so judgy of me. I know. know. Maybe that helps someone else who's lonely in a different way, but it's not important to me at this moment in my life. So, but what is important is the stuff that you're doing is really exciting. So I want to talk about all the stuff that you've been doing in terms of, well, like, let's talk about this this retreat that mm-hmm. you're going to have in November. Yeah. What is that about? What are you? Well, we're calling it the self care project. I mean, which sounds like the Blair Witch Project. Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you guys, remember that? I literally just came to your mind. I just got images that of not- women, <laughs> naked women, like <laughs> running was- through the forest. It could it could turn into that easily with me. Um, that that'll be for the third one. <laughs> no bras allowed. Yeah. Right, leave your bras in the door. You can wear your shoes, but you have to take your bra off. <laughs> You're giving me so many ideas I right now. It. I love it. No, it's really cool. Here's the, what what that grew out of was that I've been asked for a long time. Will you speak at our thing? Will you keynote? Da, da, da. And I had actually two keynotes in a row last November and March, and I was like, "This is great. I love doing this. Why am I keynoting everybody else's event? Like, yes. clearly, people want to hear what I have to say. Yeah. I should just do my own event. So that that's where that came from. And I started really digging into what was going on for me. And I started really, what I'd been talking about was what I call the science of self-care because everybody's talking about self-love and self-care. And is that a bath bomb or what is that? Like, what is the self-care? So, and to me, I always love the marriage of like the, the heart and the mind, the Mm -hmm. art and the science that that's what really excites me the most about what I get to do in the world. And that's where all the passion comes in for me. And it's why I've studied holistic, you know, traditional medicines and herbalism and, you know, I love esoteric weird stuff. I'll try anything at least once. I've, you know, been meditating for a long, long, long time. And, you know, I love the witchy stuff. I love the tarot and all that stuff. But um, obviously I'm not going to do that in my office in Beverly Hills. Although I talk about it. Like I totally will get into a conversation with a patient about you their actually sign. You could though. No, can I, I tell mean- <laughs> how often I talk about the, our signs? And then I'm like, this sounds crazy, but whatever. They keep coming back. <laughs> Okay. So anyways, <laughs> I decided like based on my science of self-care, I wanted to create a, a sort of an experience for women where they could really have a much more intimate interaction with experts. So it's going to be me. I have somebody talking about food and nutrition, but it's like, she's an amazing person. I'll just tell you that she, her whole thing is that she calls it the anti-diet diet. I just, oh, she's, yes. it's about body positivity, true self-love. And she's had quite a trajectory. She's a very interesting woman, came, had a big corporate food. I won't say what, very prominent related job that was programming. And then was like, um, I have an eating disorder. You know what I mean? And here I am wow. a nutritionist. Wow. So she's really inspirational to me. Um, I do have a friend who is 
a doula but, and a midwife, but she's also does rituals and she's going to do some kind of a ritual for us. I have some other really exciting people coming in. We'll do some movement. I'm going to have amazing food. It's in a private home. So it's going to be really homey, just us and uh, that kind of stuff. I, sex. I need to We're going to definitely up. talk about sex. Ugh, this everybody always amazing. wants to talk about sex. And um, I'm really excited to just have women that I love and respect and I admire all be together. And then we have access to each other. Mm-hmm. And the thing that I know for me that has worked is creating community and social networks that are real and authentic and based on whatever it is, a common purpose, love, support, accountability. That's what helps people bring it into their lives in a real way. And so that's why I'm calling it what I'm calling it, it because it is a project. It's an ongoing project for me. Yes. So I'm sharing what's worked for me. I'm sharing what I think is the basis for it. And if that helps you legitimize taking certain amount of time per day or per week to take care of yourself, then great. Here's yes. the, here is scientific evidence of why you need to do yes. this for your health. Yes. And, and then going forward, I'm hoping to create more of a community around that. And I'm going to do online courses and really digging back into plant medicine a lot, working with this company, you know, probably going forward. And yeah, there's a lot of That's cool so stuff, awesome. like super exciting. Yeah. Is it, so it's like a workshop where they would come all day for a couple days? No, it's going to be a one day thing. And we'll have probably three to four experiences that you have. So we're, we're still getting the program down sure. pat, depending on who's going to be there, but we'll have like, you know, a talk, lunch and then like probably we'll either do two in the morning two in the afternoon or one in the morning and then like there's two of three you can choose from in the afternoon i'm so gonna be there yeah. i can't wait yeah oh, I'm good so i'm excited. so excited yeah I'm, I'm excited about it too and then yeah. this will be the first one but hopefully yeah. there'll be more yeah, no, the plan can... is to keep doing it okay yeah because because one of the cool things about living here i think is that there are so many people who are really passionate and um, knowledgeable in their particular area. And as many people who aren't generous, there are 50 times more that are. Yes. And I have found that when I started really believing in th- this idea of abundance and that there was a plan that I didn't have, to, I don't have to do it all. Yeah. Like there's something else that's guiding me. And if I just sort of relax into it, it will happen more organically. I mean, I have to put work into it. Yeah. I have to put effort into it. Yeah. I have to be meticulous and have integrity, but I don't have to like push, push, push. I yeah. don't do that so much anymore. Yeah. I really don't. And all those great people have been showing up for me. The people who are like, me giving you this gift is only going to enhance my experience too. It's not taking away from something. Yes. I don't, I don't really want to be around that. Yeah. I mean, nobody does. Yeah. But I'm pulling in a lot more of the the first. Yeah. I'm having that experience Mm -hmm. too now. Right. Like you were saying, everybody wants to come and do this. Of course they do. Yeah. And it's, I, just to go back quickly to the self-care piece and like kind of giving yourself permission, I too, until I kind of decided until, well, I just, I should, okay, I'm going to pause and tell this story. I came to you, Suzanne, I called you when my son was almost three. And I said, Mm -hmm. I have been so depressed for two and a half years and I think I need help. And you said, oh, honey, I wish we would have caught this sooner. And you said, here's uh, Dr. Zucker's number. Here's Sprago's number. And immediately I got the help I needed. Thank God. But I suffered so long. And, but after I got the treatment, I sort of woke up to like what I'd been missing out on. And I started taking pole dancing classes and I started, you know, I just, and and my listeners have heard some bits of this story, but it's taken me all that way till now. My son is nine now. He was two then. I've really just in this last bit of, of ending my marriage, which was also, as you said, yours was, it was really hard, really difficult. You know, I didn't get married thinking, I mean, this man was love of my life. I thought this was it like forever. I'm in. But recently I've really started upping my self-care game and unapologetically so. Yep. I just spent $1,600 on a biomat. I think I told you oh, this. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> and I am obsessed with this thing. Like, I love it so much. I use it twice a day and all the biohackery stuff. And I want to I bounce back to the, the CBD stuff that you're, because all the research is so interesting. I don't know 
it's much amazing. about it at all. But yeah. I'm learning about blue light and I'm thinking, okay, I need to get these blue blocker things for me and my son, like all this weird. And my ex-husband was just over here yesterday and we were talking and laughing and he was like, you're turning into a hippie. I was like, <laughs> sure. Yep. That is. Yep. That's cool. Well, and here's the cool thing is I'm listening to what you're doing for yourself and I'm thinking, how, wow, how interesting. What is that? You know, because the reality is that the, here's the other thing. And, and I'm, how do I say this carefully? I have coined a term called toxic aspiration. That's what I'm calling it. Oh, okay. And I think when I say that, what does maybe, that mean? Well, I think this conversation is a perfect example. What I consider self-care and what you consider self-care may or may not be the same thing. Right. When we start getting the template from social media, from entrepreneurs who I, many of whom I admire as entrepreneurs. Yes. Okay. I don't, I don't admire them as wellness people because I don't think that creates wellness. Right. When you're only selling things and you're selling aspire to be me. Yes. Okay. Which is what our culture does. Yes. We have to really be careful with that. It's out there. I don't, you know, fine. That's, but I don't want to be part of it. I don't want to promote it. And I really would like to create different opportunities for women because we deserve more. Yes. We, we don't need to be aspiring to her. That, that's not a yes. thing. You're not, you're you. Yes. And so for you, it's your bio, Matt, and yeah. your blue light. And for me, it's making sure that I meditate every day and that I do, I exercise a certain amount because for me, that's where, where I get, that's yes. where my mood yes. disorders come in if I don't, yes. you know, whatever it is. You know, and I think sexuality, I think it's so great that we're talking so much more about sexuality right now because sexuality is a really important part of self-care, whether or not you're partnered. It's so there's just all this interesting stuff out there. Yeah. And that's one of my big goals right now. All of this has come, it's so similar. All of it's come out of my own experience. Yes. Like I joke, it's funny, not funny. Like, please don't go get cancer in order to figure this shit out. <laughs> like it's not yeah. a great plan. Yeah. Not a good plan. Yeah. But we can all benefit from yeah. what you've learned, the wisdom that you've gained from yeah. it. Right. Yeah. Lemonade. Yeah. Right. So, and, and speaking of, I'm, I'm just going to jump to, because I like to be a little bit, push the boundaries on this show mm -hmm. as we, you know, when I came to you, it wasn't this year, but it was last year or something. And I, I remember that conversation, by the way. Oh, he, you do? Of course I do. Yeah. I think it's, we already really liked each other, but like, oh, yeah. I, I mean- I really felt for you. Oof. I felt terrible that you had that journey. Well, I just was, I thought it was me. I thought it was something. So I that hear was, it a lot, I'm unfortunately. I'm sure you do. I'm mm -hmm. sure you do. People put a lot of pressure on themselves. Young mothers, and I mean young, like young in their motherhood, right? Um, put so much pressure on themselves. No matter what is out there, no matter what kind of conversation is happening so around it, people still have an expectation about Every themselves. Every guest I've had it's on the show difficult. where it's come up, particularly those that are more freshly in it, like you mm -hmm. say, they're young in their motherhood. It's this, they don't want to be, a, you know, Christina Grant's episode, episode eight, which will be airing before yours. Uh, she talked about how she didn't want to fail. It was admitting defeat. If yeah. she admitted, yeah. Yeah. I'm depressed and this is hard. Yeah. And it's like, oh. I remember coming to you and saying, uh, it was a year ago or something. And, and one of my girlfriends had said, well, you know, now that you're 42, your your pussy's going to dry out. And I was like, what? <laughs> and I went to you How and I horrible. said, is this true? And you said, you made a face, you kind of made a wrinkly face. You're like, oh, are you masturbating regularly? And I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is a use it or lose it. I mean, you're probably on the younger side of that. Like, but I mean, as the hormones start to wane, if you're not like stimulating blood flow, collagen production, like all of that, you know, lubrication, it's going to be a lot harder to achieve. There, there, there comes a point, not for everybody. I mean, it's, there's variation, but certainly postmenopausal, like there's big hormonal status change and the tissue changes. And we know just from research that, you know, there are women enjoying sex forever until they die, however, yeah. whatever age they are. And there are women who suffer more than others from vaginal dryness and sexual pain and stuff like that at any age, definitely at menopause when, when you're complete, you know, no more periods and the hormones start to really go down. There's definitely some physical changes, but you know, it is, there is some use it or lose it there. And then this is where this, this company for for instance, yeah, there, are other product, yeah. there are other products out there, but they make some really great, um, cannabis. Some are CBD, some are, um, THC, 
they're not to get you high. They're vaginal lubrication and suppositories. And they, I mean, the endocannabinoid system is kind of like crazily magical. Like the fact that our body, I don't know, a, a lot of listeners probably don't know much about this, but the, the deal is that we have receptors. We have an entire, almost like separate nervous system, right? Receptor system in our body specifically designed to interact with the plant, with this plant, with wow. cannabis. Wow. What? It's like, cause we co-evolved, I guess. This is, this is an ancient plant medicine. I mean, this plant and us have been having relations for ever. <laughs> yeah. Like we have a system designed specifically for these plants parts. So wow. we respond specifically to it. I just found out today the pelvic organs and the reproductive organs, the pelvic girdle, what we call has more receptors for cannabis than any other part of the body. So it's great. Male and female. Uh, that's a great question. I think so. But I wasn't really paying attention that's, to men. Um, meaning, right. Cause you were the, right. So, uh, so not just for sexual, you know, desire and sexual pleasure, cause it'll definitely increase blood flow and stimulation and sensitivity and all that stuff, but pain, menstrual cramps, yes. like all sorts of other, like, you know, so, right. And now the science has given companies like this and I'm right. sure other companies, this way of, um, giving us, you know, letting us ingest or, t or take these, right. this, CBD with, that it will treat that. That's yeah, amazing. It's, there's a lot of stuff on the horizon. So you don't have to smoke a bong. Exactly. Because <laughs> that's going to get you high, and which yeah. is fine. I'm not saying you shouldn't get high, but yeah. one of the things that happens is when you ingest orally, like have an edible or smoking, I guess, I'm not sure exactly how that works, but the smoke, I think what happens with the smoke is that when you vaporize, when you heat it up, it converts it. Uh, then the, and the liver also can, has a conversion enzyme and that creates the psychoactive properties, the high. I see. But when you are introducing it directly into the bloodstream, like vaginally rectal suppositories or another way, and you can like, you can do medical treatments that way with very high doses that aren't going to get you high, but yeah. like for back pain. Yeah. I mean, this is complicated stuff. I'm right. just starting to dive into it. Right. I'm just starting to learn. It's super exciting. And I think the political climate and the legal stuff is really thorny and kind of, but I've just made a decision to like, you know, at the plants and us have been here for a lot longer than the FDA yeah. and I am not doing anything wrong and I'm proceeding with caution, but I'm not worried. Yeah. I think not. it's really yeah, it's exciting. Super exciting. I mean, you can see how excited I am. Yes. Like, I haven't been this excited about anything for a long time. I mean, time. I think how many millions of people mm -hmm. this could help, mm -hmm. you know, different diagnoses. Yeah. And yeah, yeah that's, that's really And a lot cool. of stuff that like the meds, okay, for in women's health, a lot of the stuff that we have to treat this, they're, they're bad or they have a lot of side effects. Or you think about the opioid crisis, for yes. God's sake. Yes. But, you know, I have a lot of women that have terrible, terrible menstrual cramps and rely on narcotics, you know, and that starts oh. getting into addiction territory also. But like, these are people who are, have endometriosis, pelvic pain of other, oh. you know, reasons. So if you can be giving somebody that's an, something that's, we know is an anti-inflammatory and we know is really effective for pain because the best data is there for, for cannabis-based products. Like, why would you deny them that? Yeah. People are not ODing and dying from, from THC or CBD use. There's no documented deaths, by the way. Yeah. And I'm wondering, I mean, I don't know anything about this, but I'm wondering what the cost difference is in terms of manufacturing that. I, that's a whole other that's conversation. That's a whole other conversation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I'm just thinking it's a plant, you know, mm -hmm. w w that's anyway. Yeah. We, the, There's you'll, a lot you'll have of cool. to come back I'll come on the back. show. <laughs> There's a lot of really cool stuff going on. Yeah. That's yeah. so exciting. Yeah, it's, it's really I, exciting. I can't wait to stay tuned. I have tuned a for... shit ton of product in my car right now. <laughs> yeah, that's so amazing. Yeah. That's so amazing. Yeah. Um, oh my God. Okay. Ah, I know. Oh God, um, I should have been looking so, too. No, no, it's fine. Um, we're good. Don't worry. So, uh, we're going to, we're going to go launch into our, the three questions I ask every guest and then we'll do the lightning round. But I just first want to thank you, Suzanne, for coming on the show. I absolutely adore you. I admire you and I respect you well, thank so you. deeply. Thank you. And you're just an amazing woman and you're such an advocate for women. Um, and I just always liked you from, I mean, you've been my physician for, I mean, gosh, I've like 16 years, 17 Probably, years, something yeah. like that. Oh, that's crazy. And, um, and I'll never forget one of the many things you've helped me with, but I, I came in, I think I was eight months pregnant and 
I had gone to the Cedars, you know, class or whatever, and they showed the epidural. And I said, I don't want to do drugs if I don't have to. And you said, okay, then you need to get a doula. <laughs> that's, that's what you're going to do. And I said, okay. And you said, and it was just, you just were very matter of fact about it. And I'm so glad I did. And unfortunately you didn't get to deliver my baby. Um, because you were camping, <laughs> but, um, but I will never forget that. And it was so, um, oh, and also I remember I said, I asked you in that conversation, I said, did you, did you have, uh, drugs during your birth? And you said, that's a really personal question. And I was like, I'm, I'm so sorry. Did I offend you? And you're like, do I look offended? I'm not offended. But what you were doing was to come back to what you were just saying that you want to empower women to do. Yeah. You were empowering me to make my own choice based on what I wanted, what, what my body wanted. What I do doesn't have anything to do with you. Yeah. And that was profound for me and empowering as a mother. Mm. It's like, it's also like I learned how to say, nope, I'm going to take care of my kid the way I need to take care of my kid. Oh my God. Thank you for sharing that with me. That's beautiful. And thank you for letting me into your space and, and being curious. I mean, people like you make my, my day like worthwhile. Like this is why I, this is why I do what I do. I just love you. Okay. So, all right. Uh, first three questions. What do you think about when you hear the word MILF? <laughs> I mean, it seems sexy. <laughs> Maybe I'm just, that's the way I am. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But not, you know, like not, but the, the, to me, that sounds like a woman who kind of has her, like, she's sexy. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like different than yeah. like objectifying. Right. Well, it, I mean, it's derived from pornography. Uh-huh. You know, right. It's like, of course. It's Wasn't that like a whole category? Male invented. Right. Yeah. Uh, acronym. So it's interesting and in that I'm kind of part of my mission is to, is to reclaim it and flip it. on. I love head. that. So I love that. Um, but I always like to find out what people, mm -hmm. what their first thing, take is. What is something you've changed your mind about recently? Ooh, <laughs> wow. Do I change my mind? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. You know what? Okay. I just, I had a conversation on the phone on the way here with somebody who I knew kind of wanted to do some business with me. And I, I think I was thinking, let me entertain it, but there's no way I'm going to do this thing. And then I just decided to just listen to what this person had to say. And then I was like, Oh, this is interesting. I do that a lot where I'm like, I'm going to, I still do my old shit. I'm going to do this <laughs> thing, but I'm not really. And, but now because I'm more open and I'm listening like I can receive the information and actually make a better decision <laughs> about yeah. it. Cause I don't want to say yes to everything, obviously, but right. I want to say no to everything. Right. Well, you can't. No one no, can. No one can. Yeah. No one can. How do you define success? Oh, I don't, I mean, success, you know, to me, success is defined by my sense of satisfaction in what I'm doing or what I've done. And that changes. Like if, Today, what happened was I got to like get to know you better and you got to know me better. And like somebody is going to be helped by this conversation, then that's satisfying. Um, if tonight it's because I'm going to have, you know, dinner, I'm having dinner with my kids and we're in this restaurant. And if the, you know, food is really delicious and we don't fight, <laughs> that will be success. Yeah. <laughs> really, yeah. truly. Yeah. I love that. And that goes in with, like you said, about just sort of surrendering to the moment, surrendering to yeah. some higher thing that's yeah. kind of floating us all. Yeah. I love that, being yeah. in the moment. Yeah. Okay, lightning round. These are just silly, fun, quick fire. Yeah, everyone stresses out, but it's <laughs> you'll be fine. Okay. Ocean or desert? Ocean. Favorite junk food? Oh, ice cream. Yum. What flavor? I mean, almost any. Mm. Something with chocolate involved. Movies or Broadway show? Ooh. Broadway show. <laughs> Daytime sex or nighttime sex? Oh, anytime sex. What are you talking yeah, about? That's such a great answer. <laughs> Texting or talking? Talking. Cat person or dog person? Oh, I'm, I, I mean, I have cats, but I inherited them. <laughs> I think I'm turning into a cat person and I just don't want to admit it. Turning into a cat person, you know, 25 years later. <laughs> I'm a it. cat person. Who the hell am I joking? Have you ever worn a unitard? A unit? Yeah, of course. Is that different than a leotard? What's the difference between a unitard? unitard? is from the ankles oh. all the way up. <laughs> I danced as a kid. I must have. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> it's very 70s. <laughs> Shower or bathtub? I mean, I'd rather have a bath if I can. Yeah. If you have the time. Yeah. 
ice cream or chocolate? Oh, no, both. <laughs> I'm, well, I refuse to choose. <laughs> On a scale of one That's to like ten. That's like a Sophie's Choice right there. That's sick. <laughs> I'm, I'm a terrible, I'm going to hell. That's a terrible. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> On a scale of one to 10, how good are you at ping pong? Oh, I don't know. I haven't played it for a long time. I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to be bold. I'm going to say like I'm a seven and a half. Yes. <laughs> yes. You claim Overly that. confident for no reason. I love it. <laughs> what is your biggest pet peeve? You know, I get really annoyed when people don't, um, like, they're not, they're not, God, how do I put this into words? When people are not meticulous the way I am about certain things, like, what's the next? I mean, when they, they're, when they're sloppy about stuff, like to me, it's like you answer the call, you respond to the request. Like, even if it's no, like you don't let people slide and wait. You, you have, you're ready for action. Like I, this is a holdover from my training and my bitchy old self kind of, but I, I get annoyed at people when they don't do what I would do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Know? Which is probably daily <laughs> that that happens because most people aren't impeccable with that. No, they're really thing. not. They're really not. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, that made me sound really old, but <laughs> I'm, I'm right there with you. I'm like, why don't, why don't you return that call or that text? That's so annoying. Yeah. Yeah. If you could push a button and it would make everyone in the world 7% happier, but it would also place a worldwide ban on all hairstyling products. <laughs> would you push it? <laughs> oh, wow. That is profound. But I guess I'd be happier even though my hair was a mess and I'm going gray right now. So I need a lot of products. I'm going to go ahead and for the betterment of humanity, say goodbye to the products. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Superpower choice, invisibility or ability to fly? I mean, my addict would want to be invisible. <laughs> But that's, well, we know she's crazy. <laughs> she's fun, but crazy. <laughs> um, I think I'd rather fly, actually. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Would you rather have six fingers on both hands or a belly button that looks like foreskin? Oh, my God. Oh, I'd rather have extra fingers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Last, last set of two questions. What was the name of your first pet? Jet. What was the name of the street you grew up on? Carolyn Way. So Jet Carolyn yeah. is your poor name. Yes, I know. I'm aware. <laughs> it's, it's a good one. It's a really Carolyn good one. Carolyn Jet? Jet can, with... Oh, you can, could you do Carolyn Jet? I've thought about it. How do you know I haven't -E done it already? <laughs> J-E-T-T -T or J-E-T? Uh, you know, I never thought... We, he didn't write. <laughs> I don't know. I think it was Jet, like the um, Paul McCartney, the Wings song. Oh, yeah. Yeah. My parents inherited him from their much cooler neighbor. <laughs> Jet. Yeah. That's such a great name. I for know. A pet. He was a black poodle. Oh. He was my dance partner. He was the best. <laughs> Poor Jet guy. Caroline. <laughs> that sounds like a male porn star name. Listen, it's a brave new world. It is. <laughs> um, Suzanne Gilbert Glenz, I adore you. Thank you for coming oh, on the I show. I adore you. Hey guys, thanks so much for listening. I really hope you enjoyed my conversation with Dr. Suzanne Gilbert Lenz as much as I did. And um, next week on the show, we have author and blogger Kelly Hampton, who's another amazing mom I'd like to follow. She wrote the New York Times bestselling Bloom, a book about the birth of her second daughter, Nella. So I hope you'll tune in. Also, please head on over to milfpodcast.com and sign up for our newsletter because starting this month in October, on the 15th of every month, I am going to do a giveaway to one lucky person who has signed up for our newsletter in the last 30 days. So go ahead and sign up there for your uh, MILF updates and, and weekly newsletters. And I'm going to be giving away one of our new swag or merch. Do they call it swag or do they call it merch nowadays? I don't know, but it's a t-shirt and it's this super soft t-shirt. I actually got t-shirts and tank tops. So you can, the winner can choose winner's choice. And it's very soft and very cozy. And I'm very excited to sh share them with you all. And I'm so excited to share this journey. Thank you so much for listening to the show. Please review us. Give us, you know, a couple stars on one of the star things on iTunes. 
You can also review us on my Facebook group. I don't know. There's places where you could say, hey, this show is great. So do that if you like it. And if not, don't worry. And if you don't have time, don't worry. Just listen next week. All right. Lots of love. Bye.